G'day knuckleheads, Uncle Knackers here. Get this, I was driving down the road the other day and I came across a fencing contractor who was throwing this beautiful old hardwood fence panel into the back of his ute. I said, hey mate, what are you doing with that? And he goes, oh, I'm just going to take it down to the tip or, you know, maybe burn it. I said, what? I said, I'll tell you what, how about I take it off your hands and save you the trip of going to the tip? He said, beautiful. Job's done. So I threw it in the back of the ute and took it home because underneath this exterior is some beautiful old hardwood. And I think with a bit of TLC, we should be able to knock something up pretty nice. Just what? I'm not quite sure yet. How about one of those bench chair thingies? You know? Yeah, a bench chair thingy. Done. Now for this project, we're going to need 10 of these palings and to remove the paling from the rail you can just use a hammer and gently tap it off but they are prone to splitting a method that i like to use if you've got one of course is a reciprocating saw with a metal cutting blade just insert the blade between the paling and the rail and let the blade do the work I'll show you how to do it Okay, the first thing we need to do is to remove these old nails. And we do that with the aid of a hammer and a punch. There you go, too easy. Now what we want to do now is just take a light little shaving off this board, just a touch. So grab your planer, whether it's a hand planer or an electric planer. You can almost guarantee that when you do a video outside, you get a jet flying overhead. Maybe a dog barking or a flock of birds flying over. Or the guy next door decides that it's a really good time to start tuning his car and then the, uh, the lawnmower man turns up and starts mowing the lawn. It's amazing. So anyway, like I said, grab your planer, put on some protective equipment, earmuffs and goggles. Just give this a little bit of a touch up. And that's just about right. We've still got some of the old age, which you can't replicate, uh, some of the old greyness, and a bit of the new stuff coming through. So just repeat that process with the rest of the boards, then we'll start knocking up this chair or this bench thingy. Let's go. So I've planed the boards down, and now it's time to cut to length. I need to get rid of some of this daggy stuff. And I've calculated that the maximum length I can get out of each of these boards is about. 1,340 millimeters. So I need to cut three of those, and for the legs, I need to cut what's that? Eight at 500 millimeters. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I've cut the legs eight in total, and from end to end they're 500 millimeters long or in imperial if i get my little tape measure out that's about 19 inches and you'll also notice that i ran a taper down one side now from the top of the leg to the start of the taper is six inches which is about 150 millimeters running down to the end here which is 45 to 50 millimeters which is about two inches so there you have it Legs are cut, tops are cut, and now all we need to do is build a very simple frame and put the whole thing together. Come on. So here's the frame that I've just knocked up, all out of palings. There's the palings there, and these here, these supports, are the rails from that fence panel that we pulled apart. This here is going to be the seat at the top, and this here 
two of those legs that we cut, we've glued and nailed together to form one leg. And it goes on like this. By applying a generous amount of woodworker's glue to the inside of the leg, and then line it up on the frame, bang, 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 and nail it off. Do that for the other three legs, and job's done. And then it's time to nail the top off, and we're almost finished. So there you go, the top's on, and I must say, it's looking pretty good. Now you also notice that I've sparingly put down some teal paint on the top here. Most of that is going to be sanded off in the final sand, and all that'll be left is hints of green or teal in these cracks or in these knot holes. And it needs a good sand because we don't want to get any splinters in our bum. So anyway, let's get sanding. So I've done the final sand, and it's come up absolutely beautiful. And the only thing left to do is to put a coat of clear marine grade satin varnish across the whole lot. Probably two or three coats. And then when that's all done, it should be all finished. Happy days. Now three coats of varnish later, and we've transformed these old palings into this. Check it out! Now I don't wish to brag, but I think it's turned out really well, considering where it came from only a short time ago. I think the end result is spot on. It's nice and rustic, which is what I was after. It's got the old nail holes there, and I think there's just enough hint of that teal coming through without going over the top. It's nice and solid, and I think it's a project well within everybody's capabilities. So the next time you're driving around and you stumble across some old fence palings, take them home and have a crack. Your friends will be very, very impressed. So there you go, how to make one of those bench seat thingies out of old fence palings. What a top project. Great tip, Nakaz! And as per usual, if you found this video useful, subscribe to my channel. The button's down there, thumbs up, the button's down there as well. And I'm also on that Facebook thingy at DIY for Knuckleheads. Check that one out as well. Now, don't go this yet, because there'll be photos going backwards and forwards of this little baby in all its glory. So, till next time, I'm out of here. Cheers.